you decided to start homeschooling but don't know where to go from there, or if you didn't decide yet but the idea crossed your mind, or if you are already homeschooling but are still pretty new to this world, then you are in the right place. We'll go over homeschooling laws in Indiana, how to properly withdraw your child from school, how to get connected with other homeschoolers, and we will explore homeschooling styles and curriculum options. Hi, my name is Ilona and welcome to the homeschool family. Homeschooling can seem overwhelming at first. There are so many things you need to know. What is the homeschooling law? Which curriculum to use? There's so many out there. How will I socialize my kids? I don't want them to sit at home all day. Can I even do it? I'm not a teacher. We all have doubts, but let me tell you this. You're their parent and you know what's best for them. No teacher ever knows your kids better than you do or care about them more than you. Second of all, it's easier than it seems originally. I'm Polish and English is my second language. I was definitely worrying, how am I going to teach my kids English? I can't even hear the difference between bed and bed. Or I couldn't pronounce the TH sound correctly. How am I going to teach my kids letter sounds if I can't even pronounce them? But guess what? There's an app for that to read the correct letter sounds. We just always find a way when we have to. So let's say you are not good at math. Then you can use video-based curriculum where you don't really have to teach it. Or you can learn it along the way with your child. So let's first talk about the law. Homeschooling laws are different in every state. So if you are in a different state, I recommend going to hslda.org to check homeschooling laws in your state. But in this video, we will focus on Indiana laws. Quick disclaimer, I'm not a law professional and all this information is just what I learned over the years. For any legal issues, please seek professional advice. Indiana is a great place to homeschool. Comparing to other states, it has very low regulations and there is no notice required. So what is required in Indiana? If your child was previously enrolled in school, you have to notify the school that you are withdrawing them. I recommend asking your school what the withdrawal process they recommend. They often have a form they want you to fill out. If they don't, you can just find a withdrawal form online. And that's all you have to do. You are not required to notify the school about what curriculum you're going to use or any other details. Homeschoolers in Indiana are not required to register in the Indiana Department of Education website. This enrollment is voluntary and it doesn't really give you that many benefits to register, so many homeschoolers choose not to register. You can withdraw your child at any time of the year. You don't have to wait till the end of the school year. And if homeschooling doesn't work out, you can also register them back at any moment. If your child was never attending school before, then you don't have to notify anyone. After your child is officially withdrawn, here's what you are required to do. You have to provide equivalent instructions in English language. Even though it says equivalent instructions as those given in public school, there aren't any mandatory subjects that you have to teach in Indiana. It is, however, a good idea to teach similar subjects as those taught in public schools. You must do 180 days of school per year and keep attendance records. School year in Indiana generally is set from July 1st till June 30th. Keeping attendance can be as easy as putting 180 X's on the calendar. You can do school on any day of the week and you get to decide what is considered school. On some lazy days, your kids might just watch a documentary or do a craft or help you cook dinner and all of that can count as school. Keep attendance also doesn't mean you have to send it anywhere. You just have to have it available in case someone asks for it. But in reality, most of the time, no one ever asks for it. You must keep attendance starting in fall of the school year in which your child turns seven. You are, however, required to provide that information to state if they ask for it. As far as law is concerned, that is all that you are required to do when you're homeschooling in Indiana. Your kids don't have to take any standardized tests. You don't have to provide samples or portfolios to anyone. However, it's a good idea 
idea to keep some samples or a portfolio. I keep a binder with some of their work, but it's mostly for memories and it's not a requirement. It doesn't matter as much in elementary school, but as your kids get older in high school, there might be places that ask for a portfolio of their work. Now let's talk about how to get connected with other homeschoolers and best ways to socialize our kids. It seems like the first question you hear after you tell somebody you decided to homeschool your kids is, what about socialization? So here are some ways to socialize. First, you have to consider if you would like to join a homeschool co-op. Some co-ops are religious and some are secular, and most of them parents have to volunteer their time to help out in some way. Many people love it, others not so much. But how do you find a local co-op? I would start looking on Facebook. Search and join local homeschooling groups and ask there. You can search for your city name or area followed by the word homeschool, for example, Northwest Indiana Homeschool. If that search doesn't work, extend your area, search for Indiana Homeschool Groups and ask there if anyone heard of local homeschool group in your area. Besides co-ops, there are many ways to socialize. Think about scouts, 4-H, local sports teams. You can just get together with other homeschool friends. If you don't know anyone who homeschools, ask if anyone wants to get together in those homeschool Facebook groups. Libraries often have classes for homeschoolers. We've been to events organized by local universities. My kids right now are both in Cub Scouts. My son is in robotics class. We meet weekly with a small group of homeschooling friends. We take field trips to many places. Just this school year, we went to over 20 different field trips. You also go once a week to a Polish language school. I feel like they're getting plenty of socialization and our schedule is still pretty open most of the time. Okay, so you pulled your child from school, found few local homeschoolers, maybe you even signed up for a co-op. Then what? How do you actually homeschool? There are so many curriculums to choose from. The choices can be overwhelming, but there are so many choices for a reason because each child is different. There isn't one curriculum that will work for everyone. That's why you need to do your research and find out what's your child's learning style. Some of the main learning styles are visual, kinesthetic, and auditory. Some kids learn best by watching a video or a documentary. Others learn by doing, and they need more manipulatives. After you figure out your child's learning style, which actually could be a combination of few styles, then you might want to consider researching homeschooling styles. You might have heard of classical, Montessori, unit studies, Charlotte Mason, and Waldorf, just to name a few. Knowing what learning style you want in your homeschool will help you pick the right curriculum. You also should learn about de-schooling, which is different than unschooling. It's a period of time where you do very little formal schoolwork in order to recalibrate your child's natural love of learning. It's recommended to do one month of de-schooling for each year they spend in public school. This period will give you more time to research curriculums. When picking curriculums, remember that less is more and most new parents tend to overbuy at first. For example, language arts has many different components like grammar, spelling, writing, reading, literature. For your first year, try not to cover it all. Trust me, they don't need all language art subjects every single year. You also have to consider if you want your curriculum religious or secular, online or book-based. For a short list of curriculum choices I picked for brand new homeschoolers, stay tuned for our next video coming out next week. So click that subscribe button so you don't miss it. For now, check out this Beast Academy review since it's a great math option. Thank you for watching. See you next time.